Nancy, the third quarter really did the Nets in. Cleveland had tremendous energy. And, Richard, we know the defense is going to continue to be a topic. Teams will look to take advantage of the Nets' weaknesses, and the Cavaliers gained a lot of confidence in these two games. Both games, two of the best offensive performances we've seen from Cleveland this season. Yeah, and, and the Cleveland Cavaliers added a lot when they added Jared Allen and they added Torian Prince. Yep. We, we saw that, you know, not only in the first game, but in this game uh, tonight. But really and truly, you the Nets have the attention of the entire basketball community, the entire basketball yep. world, not just from the fan standpoint, but from team standpoint and like, OK, how do we match up with this group? How can we beat this team? What are the things that we're going to need to do to tweak w- th- th- uh, our competition level against them. And so, you know, these two games really kind of gave a formula for success. But the good news is that the Nets also know. They know the areas that they need to improve to get where they have to go. And, Richard, you've lived through this, playing on teams with big names. That also brings a higher scrutiny level. Everybody is watching. Everybody's paying attention. Everybody is dissecting your problems. And sometimes those problems grow because of all – the chatter. Steve Nash is well aware of it. He talked about it pregame, pride on defense, how those things must change. And for Brooklyn, no Kevin Durant. So this was an opportunity to see Irving and Harden. What were your thoughts on the two of them playing together? Well, it's funny. There was so much conversation and would there be enough offensive opportunities for the three players? Yeah. I don't think there's any question of that at this point in time. We look at guys like Jeff Green and Joe Harris have actually their offensive opportunities have actually expanded with the quality of talent around them. So I don't look at that. It's all about defense. It's all about rebounding. Obviously not having Kevin Durant, your seven foot you know, wing player out there hurts your rebounding opportunities, but you're going going to have to defend and it's going to start with Kevin Durant James Harden and Kyrie Irving if those guys defend at a good level then this team is going to be a force but that's where the sacrifice is going to come in not on the offensive end but on the defensive end second half of the back-to-back it's the Miami Heat coming to town it has not been a smooth road so far for Miami we know they have a lot of talent but they've dealt with a bunch of injuries And Miami right now still looking for its footing here in 2021. Yeah, they, they, they're going to be a, a good team later. Understand, when we talk about that quick turnover, everyone was talking about the Lakers. Well, the Miami Heat and their young players got a lot of minutes late yep. into the season. So for them to have this quick turnaround, it was going to be a little difficult, in my opinion. They didn't have any real additions. Uh, so that this team was pretty you know set when they showed up to start this year. So when you have a couple of injuries, some COVID protocol situations, and they played a ton of minutes late, it's going to be I think they're going to build up as the season progresses it's now a two-game losing streak for the Brooklyn Nets they'll try to put an end to it against Miami here at Barkley Center